back to beyoungministry.blogspot.com and to the Be Young Ministry YouTube channel. I'm sitting in the backyard of my house here in Elgin, South Carolina. I got uh, Millie with me. Millie, our uh, one-year-old Manchester Terrier, is sitting just a few feet away from me. You may hear some birds. You might even hear a loud clap of thunder because a thunderstorm is imminent so I better get going we're in Ephesians 5 and I'm reading from the voice version of the Bible today we're in verses 11 through 14 which reads don't get involved with the fruitless works of darkness instead expose them to the light of God you see it's a disgrace to speak of their secrets so don't even talk about what they do when no one is looking when the light shines it exposes even the dark and shadowy things and turns them into pure reflections of light. This is why they sing, Awake, you sleeper, rise from your grave, and the anointed one will shine on you. That's Ephesians chapter 5, verses 11 through 14. The Apostle Paul enlightens the believer to expose the dark nature of sin. You know, if we have not discovered the dark nature of sin for ourselves, we're going to have a hard time exposing it for others. The believer is to be the source of correct information on things human to those who are in darkness. And we will expose it as such when we have realized its fruitlessness. However, we will not expose it if we are engaged in it. The believer is to influence those who are held hostage in darkness. We are to reveal God's definitions regarding any given subject. In verse 11, the apostle writes, Don't get involved with the fruitful or fruitless works of darkness. Instead, expose them to the light of God. Paul is saying, Make the fruitfulness or fruitlessness, pardon me, of sin obvious the apostle does not mean for us to denounce our friends we are most effective when we show the truth about God's definition on a on a given subject and to do this we must know the truth for ourselves then we are to let those in darkness know what God intended for us that his definition of things is for our best. In verse 12, Paul takes us by the hand and charges us to not focus on the sin, but to focus on the explanation regarding why we should not engage in sin. God gave us his word to provide his best for us and to protect us from what will harm us. In verse 14, Paul directs us to wake ourselves up first. Awake, you sleeper, he writes. Rise from your grave, and the anointed one will shine on you. We must recognize that all of mankind's hearts and minds are arrested by the enemy, and we must be careful to turn not just our minds and our hearts to the Lord Jesus, but also those whom we have influence over. We must first realize that in the Word of God, we have been given the facts as they are truth as it really is as a result Christ gives us light then we will be poised to tell those in darkness what we have uncovered this will lead us to the discovery that helping people to see God's great heart for them through his definition of life is what our calling is all about through God's word we discover that God's desires to bring all mankind back into wholeness and fullness will someday be a reality. Be careful, though. We are not to be the moral police condemning people for their sin. After all, Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 5 that we're not to judge those outside the church. We expose the deeds of darkness simply by living consistently with God's definitions of things. We must remember those living in darkness are blind. They don't realize what they're doing 
to themselves and what the consequences of their choices will produce, not only in their lives, but in the lives of those whom they love. But when they're exposed to the light, they will see the substantiveness of the new life the Lord Jesus also offers us. Then they will see the contrast. They will see the difference between loving people and using people, between immorality and purity, between walking in the truth and fooling oneself. Paul concludes this portion by writing, Awake, you sleeper, rise from your grave, and the anointed one will shine on you. Living consistently with who we are in Christ will not only benefit us, it will benefit those around us. A child of life will never be happy living in darkness. The reason being, we were created to influence people. We were created to be loved and to love. I love the story Tony Campolo tells of one of his visits to Honolulu. A few years back, Tony flew to Hawaii to speak at a conference. The way he tells the story, he checks into a motel and tries to get some sleep. Unfortunately, his internal clock wakes him at 3 a.m. The night is dark, the streets are silent, the world is asleep, but Tony is wide awake and his stomach is growling. He gets up, prowls the streets, looking for a place to get some bacon and eggs for an early breakfast, but everything is closed except for a grungy dive in an alley. He goes in and he sits down at the counter. The fat guy behind the counter comes over and asks, What you want? Well, Tony isn't so hungry anymore. So I and some donuts under a plastic cover, he says, I'll have a donut and black coffee. As he sits there munching on his donut and sipping his coffee at 3.30 a.m., in walk eight or nine provocative loud prostitutes who just had finished their night's work. They plop down at the counter and Tony finds himself unfortunately surrounded by this group of smoking and swearing hookers. He gulps his coffee, planning to make a quick getaway. Then the woman next to her, next to him, Tony, says to her friends, You know what? Tomorrow's my birthday. I'm going to be 39. To which her friend nastily replies, So what do you want me from me? A birthday party? Huh. You want me to get you a cake and sing happy birthday to you? The first one says, Ah, oh, come on, why do you have to be so mean? Why do you have to put me down? I'm just saying it's my birthday. I don't want anything from you. I mean, why should I have a birthday party? I've never had a birthday party in my whole life. Why should I have one now? Well, when Tony heard that, he said he made a decision. He sat and waited until the woman left. And then he asked the fat guy behind the counter, Do they come in here every night? Yeah, he answered. The one right next to me, he asked. She comes in every night. Yeah, he said. That's Agnes. Yeah, she's here every night. She's been coming here for years. Why do you want to know? Because she just said that tomorrow was her birthday. What do you think? Do you think we could maybe throw a little birthday party for her right here in the diner? A cute kind of a smile crept over the fat man's chubby cheeks. That's great, he says. Yeah, that's great. I like it. He turns to the kitchen and shouts to his wife. Hey, come on out here. This guy's got a great idea. Tomorrow is Agnes's birthday, and he wants to throw a party for her right here. His wife comes out. That's terrific, she says. You know, Agnes is really nice. She's always trying to help other people, and nobody does anything nice for her. So they make their plans. Tony says he'll be back at 2.30 the next morning with some decorations and the man, whose name turns out to be Harry, says he'll make a cake. At 2.30 the next morning, Tony arrives back. He has crepe paper and other decorations and a sign made of big pieces of cardboard that says, Happy Birthday, Agnes. They decorate the place from one end to the other and get it looking great. Harry had gotten the word out on the streets about the party, and by 
315, it seemed that every prostitute in Honolulu was in the place. There were her hookers wall to wall. At 3.30 on the dot, the door swings open, and in walks Agnes and her friend. Tony has everybody ready. They all shout and scream, Happy birthday, Agnes. Agnes is absolutely flabbergasted. She's stunned. Her mouth falls open. Her knees started to buckle, and she almost falls over. And when the birthday cake with all the candles is carried out, that's when she totally loses it. Now she's sobbing and crying. Harry, who's not used to seeing a prostitute cry, gruffly mumbles, Blow out the candles, Agnes. Cut the cake. So she pulls herself together and blows them out. Everyone cheers and yells, Cut the cake, Agnes. Cut the cake. But Agnes looks down at the cake, and without taking her eyes off of it, slowly and softly says, Look, Harry, is it all right with you if I, I mean... If I don't, I mean, what I want to ask is, is it okay if I keep the cake a little while? Is it all right if we don't eat it right away? Harry doesn't know what to say. So he shrugs and says, sure, if that's what you want to do, keep the cake. Take it home with you if you want. Oh, could I? She asked. Looking at Tony, she says, I live just down the street a couple of doors. I want to take the cake home. Is that okay? I'll be right back, honest. She gets off her stool, picks up the cake, and carries it high in front of her like it was the Holy Grail. Everyone watches in stunned silence. And when the door closes behind her, nobody seems to know what to do. They look at each other. They look at Tony. So Tony gets up on a chair and says, What do you say we pray together? And there, they, in a hole-in-the-wall greasy spoon, half the prostitutes in Honolulu at 3.30 a.m., listening to Tony Campolo as he prays for Agnes, for her life, her health, and her salvation. Tony recalls, I prayed that her life would be changed and that God would be good to her. When he's finished, Harry, the guy behind the counter, leans over and with a trace of hostility in his voice, he says, Hey, you never told me you were a preacher. What kind of church do you belong to anyway? One of those moments that when just the right words came, Tony answers him quietly. I belong to a church that throws parties, birthday parties, for prostitutes at 3.30 in the morning. Harry thinks for a moment and in a mocking way says, No, you don't. There ain't no church like that. If there was, I'd join it. Yep, I'd join a church like that. And of course... Tony goes on to make his point. This is the type of church that we all would join because it's motivated by love. And that's what our calling is, to love on people, whether they love us in return or not. My friends, I trust these podcasts, these blogs are helpful to you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of any help to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, have a great day.